What's happening? It's Darian Amount to the South Gray. And last time I came on here after a Saints game with an impromptu video, it was to vent and talk about how angry I was, though. It was a win against the Los Angeles Chargers. It just wasn't good looking. And I'm not on that type of time today. I'm not here to be angry. I'm here because I'm peaceful. I'm happy. I'm blissful. I'm not here to showboat or be braggadocious either. I'm just here to talk about the game. And that's the New Orleans Saints whipping up on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 38-3. to And this is very reminiscent of the, the Bucks versus Packers game. Because the Bucs were the team trying to get into that elite status in the NFC. While the, while the Green Bay Packers were the elite team. The number one team in the NFC. That's the same thing here as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have now, after whipping up on that team, became the top dog. And the Saints are looking to creep back into that game. Keep creep right back in. I'm an elite team too. And they showed it. Now I'm going to start off on the defensive side of the ball because that's what was so impressive to me. Because I'm going to be all the way transparent. I didn't think the Saints were going to win this game, and it was because of the Saints' defense. They hadn't proved anything to me. But today they put it together because we've been talking about getting some better coverage and getting some pressure, and that's exactly what happened today. Tom Brady should put out a restraining order on every single defensive lineman on the New Orleans Saints, whether they're on the active roster, whether they got snaps, whether they were inactive, or even if they're on the practice squad to get a workout. Tom Brady should go down to the Tampa uh, Police Department and ask for a restraining order over anybody that suits up on the defensive line for the New Orleans Saints because they were harassing him all day from the very first snap. You could tell that he was uncomfortable. I sounded like a broken record on Twitter because I was talking about how they kept getting after him. They kept forcing mental errors for him. That interception, whether that was on Antonio Brown stopping the route or if that was on Tom Brady just going too long, it was because of the pressure in my mind and also that lack of chemistry. So you look at his interception to Malcolm Jenkins. He just threw it up because of the pressure. And Trey Hendrickson was a guy who we were getting pressure all game, but then he came and he got some sacks. He got his first sack. It was negated by what I think was a phantom holding call on C.J. Uh, Garner-Johnson. But, hey, he made it up because the next two plays he got after Brady again and got him down again. And it's a reason he has the most sacks on the team. He's been the biggest surprise of the year thus far. These guys were playing, and then on the back end, the defensive backs were sticky. There wasn't anywhere to go. That helped the defensive line because they are, there's a mutual uh, beneficial relationship. The defensive line gets pressure. It's better for the defensive backs. The defensive back gets great coverage. The defensive line has more time to rush the passer. It worked both ways like that. And I was just all the way uh, impressed with this team. Marshawn Lattimore, we knew you was going to show up because you show up for Mike Evans every single game. Uh, Michelle Tafoya said it. He wants to dominate Mike Evans every game, and most times he does it. Marcus Williams loves playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as he has five sacks in eight games against the team and has interceptions in four of the eight games. He likes playing this team. Tom Brady this year has thrown seven interceptions, and five of them have been to the New Orleans Saints. They have had the most success causing turnovers for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. And they ain't run the ball. They made a... Uh, a league record for the least amount of rushes in a game with five, and one of those was a nil. The defense showed up, and it's a great reason the Saints came down with the win. Now let's go to the offense, and you can't convince me that that offense did not hear everybody talking this week, whether it was about Drew Brees hearing about his air yards. He said, man, forget them air yards. He did the DX chop on them. And if y'all know DX, y'all know what that means. <laughs> You can't tell me that Breeze and Peyton didn't hear about Brady having a record. Mind you, Brady played one more game than Breeze had this year. So I don't want to say it was inevitable that he was going to get back in front. But more likely than not, when the Bucs had their bye week, Breeze was going to move forward. But Breeze came out and threw four touchdowns to Brady's zero. And then he threw it to 11 different players. Jameis Winston got in on the fun, threw it to Michael Burton. So that meant 12 players got a catch today. Because the Saints, for the first time, since week one, had their whole whole wide receivers, tight ends, running backs. They have anybody they want to throw the ball to. If they wanted to put Ty Montgomery in the game and get him a catch, they could have if they wanted to. It's like that. They have all the people they want. And then Mike Thomas came back. He was the leading receiver with five for 51. He only got six targets. He didn't get worked too much. It was beautiful. Just how they eased him into the game. All his, it felt like all his catches mattered. And Taysom Hill balled out. I know a lot of people give him some hell, but Taysom Hill played well. And then speaking of guys that give hell, you have to show love to Andres Pete because on, the Taysom, on one of Taysom Hill's runs, 
He pulled across, and he was the reason it was a big play. He opened the hole. And on Alvin Kamara's big run, he opened the hole there. So these two guys get a lot of hell from the team, well, from fans at least. And they showed up today. And it was an overall domination in the first half offensively for the Saints. But it was two plays specifically on that first drive that piqued my interest. And it was the Taysom Hill throw to Jerry Cook. And it was the touchdown pass to Traquan Smith. And that's because both of these were set up by play calls that Sean Payton calls often. When Taysom Hill's in the game, nine times out of ten, it's a run. At least when he's at the quarterback position. It's a run, but this was the tenth time. And you could tell the Bucs were expecting that because they played no coverage over the top. All he had to do was throw the ball to Jared Cook, who had Devin White beat. Because they thought he was going to run the ball. They sold out for the run. And then you had the touchdown pass to Traquan Smith where all three of the defensive backs for the Buccaneers jumped on that screen to Alvin Kamara because this year repeatedly, week after week, most times, multiple times in the game, we have seen Alvin Kamara be thrown a screen pass on third and long and say, go make something out of nothing. But this time they bit on it and they hit Traquan Smith over the top. And I love these plays over all of them because, yes, the Saints did dominate. But these two plays showed that Sean Payton knows how to trick the defense by breaking his trends. And it's nice to see not no pre predictable play calling from Payton. And as far as my game balls go, I'm going to give it to Trey Hendrickson because T-Rex was balling. That man was hooping for sure. He got after Brady when they took away one sack. He said, I ain't worried about it. I'll go get me two more. I'm going to give the offensive game ball to Drew Brees because Drew Brees heard all the talk about Tom Brady having his weapons. He said, I still got my hitters too. I still got Traquan Smith, Michael Thomas. I hope you didn't forget about Deontay Harris, Marquez Callaway. I can hit everybody, 11 different players. Y'all want Adam Troutman to get some love? Here goes the ball for him too. Anybody could get it. And then lastly, my last game ball goes to Taysom Hill, and I think it's only right that he's not a positionless player. He's not a position player. So it's right that he doesn't get an offensive or a defensive game ball. He just gets a game ball because he balled out. And he passed the ball twice, two completions. Why he can't get a game ball? <laughs> so this was utter domination by the New Orleans Saints on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This don't mean that the Bucs are a trash team or they're more than we thought they were. They just got to go back to the drawing board and improve on some things. But the Saints dominated them. And now not only do they have a tiebreaker over the Bucs, they are the number one team in the NFC South. And you cannot, and I mean cannot, deny the Saints from being in that conversation as one of the elite teams in the NFC any longer, point blank period.